Jump at Jehoshaphat. <laughs> The Joe Rogan experience. If categories dis 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 dissolve, especially fundamental ones, the culture is dissolving because the culture is a structure of category. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Right. So, and in fact, culture is a culture is a structure of category that we all share. So we see th things the same way. Well, that's why we can talk. I mean, not exactly the same way because then we'd have nothing to talk about. But. Roughly speaking, we have a bedrock of agreement. Uh, that's the Bible, by the way. That's my first amen, by the way. That's the Bible, by the way. But he's not just, well, he's saying way more than, than we might think he's saying. So I just walked through the Museum of the Bible in Washington. That was very cool. It's a very cool museum. So the structure, that's what the Bible Yeah, that's what provides. I figured out. I've been, I just figured this out this week. So it was a cool, it was a cool thing to walk through because it's, it's chronological. They have one floor, which is the history of the Bible. Mm. But it's not exactly that. It's really what it is, is the history of the book. Now, in many ways, the first book was the Bible. I mean, literally, because at one point there was only one book, like as far as our Western culture is concerned, there was one book. And for a while, literally, there was only one book. And that book was the Bible. And then before it was the Bible, it was, a, you know, it was scrolls and it was writings on papyrus, and, but it was, we were starting to aggregate written text together, and it went through all sorts of technological transformations, and then it became books that everybody could buy, the book everybody could buy, and the first one of those was the Bible. Uh, and just chime in uh, here in the ancient world, they uh, committed their writing to scrolls, and uh, the invention of the Codex, our modern book where you flip pages, the Codex was the invention of the Christians who, who did it in order to assemble uh, Scripture. So, he, but he's talking about more than simply the technology of how you turn the pages. And then it became all sorts of books that everybody could buy. But all those books, in some sense, emerged out of that underlying book. And that book itself, the Bible isn't a book, it's a library. It's a collection of books. And so... What I figured out was, partly because I was talking to my brother-in-law, Jim Keller, who's the world's greatest chip designer and has now designed a chip that's as powerful as the human brain, which is optimized for artificial intelligence learning, by the way. And so I talked to him about that. He said, you heard of the Internet? I said, yeah, Jim, I've heard of the Internet. He said, this is way more revolutionary than that. So in any case, we were talking about meaning in text because we were talking about translation and the problem of understanding text and Jim said the meaning of words is coded in the relationship of the words to one another and the postmodernists make that case that all meaning is derived from the relationship between words that's, that's wrong because well what about rage that's not words and what about moving your hand that's not words so it's wrong mm -hmm. but but part of it's right because the meaning we derive from the verbal domain is encoded in the relationship between words. In other words, language is a web. You don't have a, a solitary word all by itself. Going back to what he said earlier, in the be uh, I would want to say, in the beginning was the word, the second person of the Trinity. Because we have the word, the second person of the Trinity, we therefore have the word, the library of books that we call the Bible, the 66 books that make up the Bible. So we have the word, then, as a result of that, we have the written word. And then, as a result of that, because Christians are people of the word, they are therefore people of words. So this generates other, other words. So we are people of the book, therefore we are people of books. Come visit Canon Press and find us publishing books for this, reason, for this very reason. So... So now then you think, well, let's think about the relationship between words. Well, some words are dependent on other words. Some ideas are dependent on other ideas. The more ideas are dependent on a given idea, the more fundamental that idea is. By de that's a definition of fundamental. So now imagine you have an aggregation of texts in a civilization. You say, which are the fundamental texts? And the answer is, the texts upon which most other texts depend. Which, in other words, which texts are upstream and which texts are downstream? Which text 
would be at the headwaters of the Great River, and which texts are just a mile or two down from the headwaters of the Great River, and which texts are a little brook feeding into the Great River right before it goes into the sea. So what uh, we have different metaphors. Uh, a fundament is a foundation. So fund a fundamental text would be a foundational text, or the uh, text that is the Ur text, the beginning text, the aboriginal text, is the one at the very beginning. And so you'd put Shakespeare way in there in English because so many texts are dependent on Shakespeare's literary revelations. And Milton would be in that category, and Dante would be in that category, at least in translation. Fundamental authors, part of the Western canon, not because of the arbitrary dictates of power, but because those texts influenced more other texts. And then you think about that as a hierarchy. So the powers, the authorities, didn't uh, crown Milton and Shakespeare and Dante as the poobahs. They, our authorities didn't make Dante into something, didn't make Shakespeare into something. Rather, it was Shakespeare that made our authorities into something. Uh, the, the influence, run, the, the river flows downstream, in other words. The river does not flow upstream. Okay, with the Bible at its base, which is certainly the case. Now imagine that's the entire corpus of, ling of linguistic production, all things considered. Now, how do you understand that? Like, literally, how do you understand that? The answer is, you sample it by reading and listening to stories and listening to people talk. You sample that whole domain. You build a low-resolution representation of that in your, inside you. And then you listen and see through that. So it's not possible for an unbeliever like Joe Rogan to deny the Bible without depending entirely on the Bible for his ability to formulate those words of denial. And so it isn't that the Bible is true. Stop right there. You think, oh, there, he, he whiffed it. No, keep listening. It's that the Bible is the precondition for the manifestation of truth, which makes it way more true than just true. That's a wonderful way of putting it. Way more true than just true. True is too weak a way of putting it. True, the Bible is true, is lame sauce. The Bible is the precondition, the, the only thing that makes possible truth. It's a whole different kind of true. And I think, this is, I think this is not only literally the case, factually, I think it can't be any other way. It's the only way we can solve the problem of perception. And I would say, as Jesus once said to a scribe many years ago, you are not far from the kingdom. Thank you.